Hi, and welcome again to another fun pack video. Okay, today we're going to talk about um, something that arrived yesterday, and that something is the Nikon Z mount 28f 2.8 lens. I'll explain more about why and why I've got this and where it fits in, and why I'm doing this comparison. And the comparison is with my Nikon um, 24 f 2.8 D lens. Now that obviously needs to go on the D750, uh, D780. Um, it hasn't got a focus motor, so I can't put it on the Z5. So we've got a different camera with this lens, Z5 with that lens. And I'm really curious <clears throat> to know which of these lenses is better. Are they so similar that there's no really real difference? Because it's going to affect the way that I do my weddings for the rest of the year as to what camera I use to do what. Um, let me briefly explain a bit of history. I bought the Z5 um, nearly a year ago actually. Having moved back to Nikon from Sony, I used Sony for two years, then back to Nikon, um, as I say, just over a year ago, um, with the D780. I wanted a camera that I was able to mingle with the guests um, and just sort of very unobtrusively just get shots and um, just sort of do sort of this with a camera and get some interesting documentary candid shots of the guests. And I tried out a Fuji film, a uh, Fuji X100T, I think it was, just to see if that idea worked uh, and whether I could do it and whether it suited my style. So I used the Fuji for two weddings. Um, I loved, I have to say, I love the Fuji, um, but wasn't prepared to change to, to Fuji from Nikon, having just changed from Sony to Nikon. Um, so that proves the point. A small, quiet, unobtrusive camera did allow me to get some, some great shots. More so than using a DSLR with um, probably a 24 to 70 lens on or something that's quite a lot bigger than, than this little 24 mil lens. And that was my main reason for getting the Z5. It's small, quieter than a DSLR, um, and I thought it would do the job that the Fuji had done um, and would allow me to get in close and, and um, capture some really good candid shots. <clears throat> the problem was there wasn't a lens that was small and really discreet um, that made this, this package anything like the size of a Fuji. <clears throat> so for last year, I used um, either the 50 or the 35 on an FT. FTZ adapter um, and it was still a bit big it's quiet it's less obtrusive than DSLR but it still wasn't quite the, the deal that I wanted so when Nikon announced the 28 uh, and the 40 I believe at the same time um, 2 by 8 lens small very light then I ordered it now here in the UK I think it was about November December um, I pre-ordered it. it was on back order um, it became available in the States a day later. Um, but here, it's only just arrived, and here we are into February. And <laughs> I'll be honest, I'd forgotten I had it on pre-order. It wasn't until I got an email saying, your order has arrived, and it's been dispatched. <laughs> so this arrived yesterday. So I'm not sure if I'm going to keep this. I've got used to using the 24D lens on the D780. And I, I switched over about halfway through last year from using the 24 to 70 to using the 24 because I found that a huge number of my shots with the 24 to 70, the vast majority, were actually at 24 mil. So I had this massive great zoom lens, well, fairly big zoom lens on the D780, but I was only using it at the 24 mil setting. So I bought the 24 2.8D lens, popped that on there instead. So my my, my setup for last year, on what I'm kind of expecting to use this year, but that might change, is the 24 on the D780. To get the shots, those, those wider shots, um, I, I really like, um, having been through 40 or 50 weddings worth of photos, and looked at the photos that I really like, I really like the 24, 28, the wide angle shots, <clears throat> 
as one type of photo. And then the 50 and a few 85 shots as the, the more zoomed in shots. And of course the 50 and the 85 are at 1.4 aperture. So we've got a nice blurry background and bokeh and all that kind of thing. The 24 or the 28 <clears throat> is much more a, a documentary shot where pretty much all the shot is in focus, obviously. So two different kinds of photos to give the clients and, and I, I find it works really well. So the setup was the 24 lens on there and then on the Z5, on the FTZ, bleh, FTZ adapter, would be the 58 1.4 or the 85 1.4. And that was my setup for the last 10 or 15 weddings I did last year. If I keep this 28, because I like this lens more than the 24, then that's going to change things. It means the 50 and the 85 are going to have to go on the um, D780. And you know what? I've, I've, <laughs> I've actually come to really appreciate the mirrorless camera. Um, I know I, I shot with Sony for two years, but I left Sony and came back to Nikon because I was disillusioned with the with the whole Sony experience. We won't go into that, but anyway, I wasn't particularly happy. So I was a little bit reluctant to buy this Z5 last year, but I've grown to love it. And it's now really my, I have to say my main camera. And at some point this year, because it's become my main camera, I might change this for a Z6 II. But for the moment it's, it's staying. Um, and the reason is that when I've got the 58 lens or the, the, the 85 lens on, focus is critical. Um, composition is obviously critical as well. Seeing the photo that you're taking, seeing the light, the exposure is critical. And all of that is a lot easier on a Z5 than it is on a D780. I still love using the D780. I love the optical viewfinder, but I've got to say, yeah, Mirrorless has, is, is slowly taking over my life. So what I'm going to do here, I've been digressing. What I'm going to do here is we can take some shots with this and with the 24. We'll go into Lightroom and we'll compare them. I will, this isn't hugely technical. This isn't particularly scientific. I'm going to shoot out the window here. I've got some flowers that I'm going to focus on so we can get some idea of the detail uh, and the depth of field. 28 f2.8 there's not going to be a particularly shallow depth of field but but we'll see we'll see what the sharpness is like the edge to edge sharpness um and i will then decide if this one is a heck of a lot better than that one then i'm going to have to rethink the way i'm going to do my uh, use my cameras at weddings for next year i'm i'm almost kind of hoping i can send this back actually um and just stick with the 24 on there but let's see let's do the shots Hi and welcome to Lightroom then. So, <clears throat> excuse me, we've got the shot from the D780 and the 24 2.8D lens over here and the Z5 with the 28 2.8Z um, mount lens over here. I've adjusted both of these to get them looking exposure wise and shadows and all that as, as close as possible. And I think you'll agree that, that they're, they're pretty similar at first glance. Let's have a pixel peep. Um, we'll just we'll just get that done and out of the way. As you know from many of my previous videos, I'm not a huge fan of pixel peeping. Uh, sharpness isn't the most important thing there is, but obviously for the point of looking at the actual lens quality, we do need to just have a quick look. So um, this is very slow rendering. There we go. So um, this is the uh, 24 2.8 the old lens um, certainly we got wonderful sharpness this flower here um, this is perfectly in focus um, and even though we're at 2.8 it is only a 24 mil lens so we're not going to have a particularly shallow depth of field so most of this bunch of flowers should be in focus um, I mean that one there is is not perfectly sharp uh, and some of these petals on the top of this one certainly aren't perfectly sharp. Let's have a look at the Z5. And I can't do side by side, sorry, I don't know why, but Lightroom, if it's on this uh, pane here, it just takes about three or four minutes before it to render and come into 
um, proper view. Even this is taking too long, isn't it? Right, we're there. Um, okay. Without a um, shadow of a doubt, this is... I won't say sharper, um, but there's more apparently in focus, even though this is, a, a, again, still at 2.8. Um, uh, yeah, I, I of the two shots, of the two lenses, uh, I have to admit, the, Z, the 28Z lens is, um, on this test, it wins. So, um, let's go back to the D lens over here. It, now, image quality wise, now I know these are two different cameras, but don't forget, they've got very, very similar sensors. Um, their performance and image quality um, in the, whatever it was, 30 something readings I did last year with both cameras, I never noticed any difference between the image quality. Um, I mean, sometimes the white balance would be slightly different or the exposure would be slightly different, but actual quality of the image, um, it's, it's, you can't choose between the two, to be honest. Um, okay, uh, can I see any difference? I've been looking at this for five minutes now, and, and to be honest, guys, I really couldn't tell you which one is better or worse, or... I, I, I'm kind of... If you put a gun to my head and said, choose one, I, I would, I think, go for the Z5, um, for, the, for the Z lens. Um, there just seems to be... It doesn't lose any character. It's got just the same character as, as the uh, the older D lens. Um, I had I did do a check um, whilst I was off camera. Let me just show you that. Um, the the Z5 has got lens profiles built in. Um, okay, and that allows the camera to perfect, if you like any um, distortion or vignetting or anything else and you can set all this in camera and one of the things I noticed was the this is the D lens um, you can see well you could do bear with me sorry if I put this straight <coughs> this straight line <coughs> excuse me along the windowsill which is of course straight you can see that in the middle there where the flowers are you've got what equates to about half an inch, 15 millimeters or so of distortion. The windowsill looks slightly bent. If we go to the Z photo and do the same thing. Sorry, Lightroom is playing tricks on me. I don't know, I want the angle. Thank you. Right, and if we put that along the edge, uh, this time there is absolutely no distortion whatsoever. So I don't know if it's the lens or whether it's the correction that the camera's doing, but whatever, um, it's doing a, a great job of um, getting rid of any distortion. Um, and the fact that also in camera um, there's vignetting and I've actually just I'm just going to look at it my Z5 just to um, remind myself what we can correct in camera so we can control the vignette the diffraction the distortion and the flicker um, all available in camera with the Z5 with this lens on so uh, to answer my question um, previously, which which am I going to keep? I'm, I'm going to have to seriously consider keeping the Z lens, uh, putting it on the Z5, and using the 780 to shoot with the 58 and the 85, which is different to what I was expecting to do. But I've got to say, um, I do think the images from the 28 Z lens are better than the 24 D lens. So that's my opinion. Interested to hear your comments and your thoughts, um, and I hope you found that useful. Thanks very much for watching.